Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. As mentioned, this is the follow-up to our social media lower thirds tutorial that we dropped a few days ago, and this is a more advanced version. So if you haven't checked out that first video, I'll leave that linked above up here. Go check that one out because we're going to go through the basics in that video. And in this video, we're going to build on what we learned from that one, a few more advanced animation techniques and a bit more prior knowledge required. So first off, let's have a look at what we created in the first video. So as you can see, just a really simple animation there. Nothing super fancy. All right, that's what we created in the first one. So let's have a look at what we're gonna create in this one. So a little bit more going on, a little bit more secondary animation, bounces in, everything fades away quite nicely. And just, again, just building on what we learned in the first video. So. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. And we, what you wanna do is just create a new project, 1080p is fine, and then import your social media logo. Preferably one with a transparent background, so you're gonna be looking for a PNG file. And yep, anyone will work. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, we're gonna go new fusion composition, we'll just call it social media lower third and five seconds should be enough. Frame rate 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second if that's what your project's set at. And we're just gonna go create. And then we're going to go over to Fusion, let it load up and open the media pool. And we're gonna just double click on that Fusion composition. It's gonna load our media out node down the bottom here. So we're ready to get cracking. So whenever I'm building an effect like this, so a motion graphic, the first thing I like to do is build the effect first. So build what the final image will look like in, so what we're talking about here is, so we're gonna build this bit here first at this state, and then we're gonna work backwards and do the animating, okay? It's just easier to have your final product and then go from there, at least that's how I like to work. So the first thing we're gonna do is drag a background down into our node tree and just link it to our media out node, just so we can see what we are doing. Next, we're going to get a double viewer going so we can start to see what we're creating. We're gonna drag our logo down into the node tree. We're just gonna rename that, so function F2, and we're gonna call that logo. And let's just chuck that into viewer one by just dragging the node and releasing. So now we can see how that's gonna look there. All right, so we can also merge this one across now so we can see what it looks like in the final product as well. So media out is displaying what we're seeing in the final composition and then viewer one is just showing currently just the logo. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, all right, so now we're gonna build the white circle that goes behind it. So we're gonna grab a background and we're gonna change the color to white. And then we're also gonna create an ellipse mask. So that's just gonna create a circle and that's just gonna reshape that background. So if we put this into viewer one by hitting one, you can see now we have a white circle. What we're gonna do now is actually, let's get rid of that and we're gonna merge these two together, all right? And if we put the merge node into viewer one, so click and drag, now we have, so now you can see we have our logo sitting on top of the white circle and there's something not quite right yet and that's because the logo is just a little too big. So what we're gonna do is, in between the logo and the merge node, we're gonna hit shift space and we're gonna add a transform node and just click add. And that's gonna allow us to scale the Instagram logo independently. So we're gonna scale it down till we have something that looks pretty good. And we're gonna just, I think just leave it like that. And then after the merge node, we're gonna hit shift space again and add a transform node after that. So the way nodes work is obviously it's like a hierarchy. So everything before this transform node is what this will affect. Everything before this transform node is what this one will affect. And now because everything is before that transform node. So let's chuck this one in the viewer and see what we mean. So if I scale this transform node, now you can see that everything moves relative to each other, which is exactly what we want. And we're gonna use this transform node and just merge, plug it into that merge node from before. And now you can see in our final composition, we can see the start of our logo. So before we continue, we're gonna just clean this up a little bit, otherwise it can get pretty messy. So we're just gonna drag select all that and hit Control or Command if you're on a Mac, G. And that's gonna group that. And you can just rename that one again. So function F2, we can call that the logo group. All right, it just keeps things looking a lot neater. We will not need to jump into this group, but you can if you want to just by double clicking and then you can get the X, but we don't need to anymore. So what we're gonna do is quickly move, resize this one and put it into where we want it to be. So we're gonna put it down here 
I'm gonna resize it again. Something like that I think looks pretty good. Next, we're gonna create our little white bar that comes out. So we're gonna create and drag another background node down. We're gonna chuck that into viewer one. We're gonna make that one white. This time we're going to create a rectangle mask for this one. All right, and luckily we can see the outline here. So if we go into our inspector, we can control some of the parameters. And so we're just going to bring the width in and the height and fiddle around with it until we have something roughly that we like. And we can move the handle here and sort of resize it a little bit. Again, we're not trying to be too specific here. I'm just gonna bring it in like so. And what we might do as well is we're gonna do adjust the corner radius and that's just gonna round off the corners. Like you can see, you can make like a pill shape. We're not gonna do something, nothing too massive major, just a little bit. And we're gonna go like that. And then with that done, what we can do is drag the output of the background to the new merge. It's gonna create another merge and now we can see everything as is. And what we might do is we're just gonna move that just a little bit out of the way. Brilliant, now we have almost everything. Last but not least, we need to add our text. So we can grab our text node, drag that down here. Straight away, we can just merge that straight on top so we can see what's going on. We can start typing. So we can just create our thing. So we're gonna go at that modern dude. By the way, if you haven't followed me on Instagram already, head on over and follow me there. Drop a lot of cool photos. We're also gonna change the color of it, something that contrasts quite nicely with the white. I'm not gonna go full black. We're just gonna go kind of like a dark gray. I'm gonna put it on top. And then just with the text controls here, we're just gonna mess with the size a little bit and the tracking to get it to fit into our little sort of, let's call it our pill or whatever you wanna call it. All right. So now if we have a look at our media out node and we can just get this one viewer going, now we have our finished graphic. This is what I said we're gonna create. Now we just need to animate it. Now animating in DaVinci Resolve, especially for motion graphics, can be done in a number of different ways. I like to use masks to create the illusion that objects are sort of coming out of nowhere. So we're gonna use a mask to make our pill appear out of nowhere as well as the text. To do that, we're gonna drag a rectangle node down the bottom here and you can see we've got our rectangle and this one's gonna be for the pill. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna line this up with the edge here and instead of animating the pill, that's gonna stay still. We're gonna animate this mask on and off and I'll show you what you mean. So with nodes, the blue triangles represent masks and you can see that by hovering over. So if I drag this rectangle into the blue mask of the merge node, this, this rectangle now acts as a mask to reveal or hide everything that is connected to that merge node or at least that merge node tree. So as you can see here, we can use this mask to make it look like that particular to make it look like that pill is sort of flying in and out of the screen. So what we're gonna do is we're going to leave it there for now. We're gonna do the exact same for the text one here. So we're gonna drag another rectangle down. We're gonna connect it straight to the mask. And again, we're gonna put it more or less in the same position as the other one. And now if we drag that on, we can make it look like the text appearing out of nowhere. So now we are 100% set to create this effect. And what we need to do now is start animating at least the first part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a keyframe with the transform node, and this is for our little logo thing here. We're gonna set a keyframe for the size. And we're gonna set the keyframe to zero. So it's gonna start at nothing. And as you can see here, we need to adjust one of our masks. That's fine. So we're just gonna move it over just ever so slightly a little bit more so we don't see anything cool. All right, back to the transform. So we've set our keyframe at frame zero. We're gonna move forward five frames, okay? And we can retime this at the very end. We're just gonna figure it out roughly at the start and then we'll fine tune the animation at the very end. So now we're gonna boost the size and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make it a little bit bigger than what we would normally have it. So I think we're gonna to go to like, let's go to maybe 0.4, something like that. And then we're gonna go forward a couple more frames, not exactly five, and we're gonna drop it down to the size that we want. So let's go like 0.5. So we're gonna go about 0.35 for that one. All right, that looks good. And so now if we were to play this back, we have effectively a little bit of a bounce, okay? And that's pretty good. Now we could have just created a scale effect and that's exactly what we did in the very first video. But by adding this little bit of a bounce, it's creating a little bit of secondary motion there. It's gonna make it look a little bit more organic. All right, so now, we find out where our keyframe, so around about frame eight. Now we're gonna set a keyframe. We'll go one frame forward. 
I'm gonna set a keyframe for our rectangle for our pill. And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to the center, and this is what controls the position of our mask, and we're gonna set a keyframe. And then we're just gonna move forward to frame 15 and move it over, and like so now we have it look like our pill just comes out of nowhere. Fantastic, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the next one, which controls the text. I'm gonna set a keyframe for the center. I'm gonna move forward again, about five frames, and we're gonna reveal the text by just sliding that over, okay? And so now if we play this back, now we have our little bounce animation. The pill opens up, that modern dude appears. All right, and so far, so good. So now all we need to do is let all this sort of hang for a little bit, and just like the first tutorial, around frame 80, we're just gonna start reversing the effect. So we're gonna set another keyframe, go forward a little bit, I'm gonna just pull that mask all the way away. Get the next one, set a keyframe there. So we're sort of following an order, go forward a few more frames. Maybe let's go there, drop that down like so. So that's disappeared. And now we're gonna get the transform node, set another keyframe. And remember we set the extra keyframe so that the program knows that between this frame and this frame here, no animations occur. And then we're gonna just drop down a little bit and drop the size to zero nice and easy. Now, if you want to sort of really help sell this, we could also set an angle. All right, so we can set a keyframe for the angle. And what we'll do is we'll offset that quite a bit. And then when we get to there, we'll just set the angle to zero. So now it looks like it's spinning. If we play that through, now it looks like it's spinning in. All right, so we can grab the transform node, go back here, so another keyframe for the angle, just rotate the angle out a bit. So now look, we've got our animation, everything is looking very, very nice. What we're gonna do now is just like in the first tutorials, we're gonna go into the spline editor and we're gonna start smoothing out some of these animations. So we're gonna move the nodes over, grab the spline editor, and we're gonna start with the transform. So we're gonna select that, turn that on, and now we can see our animation path. So we're gonna fit all of everything into view, and we're just, all we're gonna do is select and smooth. All right, nothing super fancy on this one. Select and smooth. Same with that one, smooth. I'm gonna smooth the crest as well. And then we're gonna select that one there and smooth. Nice and easy, nothing too fancy there. Then we're going to go to the rectangle one. Same thing, fit to frame, zoom to fit. I'm gonna select that one, shift S to smooth. Select that one, shift S to smooth. And then we're gonna just open up the last rectangle same thing, fit it, click it, shift S to smooth it. And that's just gonna really help our animation. Now there's a few more things we could do. In the merge nodes, this we can control some motion blur to help make this look a little bit more realistic. So what we're gonna do is on each merge node, we're gonna go up to the top, go to the settings and use motion blur. And we're just gonna leave default settings there. And that's just gonna add a little bit of a blur to everything animated prior to the merge node. Fantastic, so now if we go back to our edit page, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag that fusion composition down and we're just going to just going to render this one. All right, so let's have a look at how this has turned out. All right, so I think the timing on that one's actually not too bad and the reason it's not too bad is because, well, you know, I've done it before so I already figured out the timing. All right, but let's, what I don't like here is, watch this mask. I don't like the way it sort of, it looks a bit too harsh. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the Fusion page and we're gonna have a look at these masks here that control the animation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, let's go through like the center of an animation so we can see what's going on. All right, we're just gonna zoom in a little bit. And what we're gonna do in, in the inspector is we're gonna give it a bit of a softer edge. So if we do that, now we can, oh yeah, that's gonna look really nice. We're gonna do that again on the text, I believe. Let's do it. Yeah, so that's gonna help it look a lot a lot more natural, a lot less harsher. Now, now, like I said at the start, sometimes you might wanna fix the animation up. Maybe you didn't get the timing just right, and that's really easy to do so. Currently, I don't mind the timing, but if you didn't, you could just open the keyframe editor up, and let's bring this up, and. What you're gonna see here, is we're gonna to zoom to fit so we can see everything, is pretty much a weird bar chart which shows start frame and end frame and all the keyframes are these white 
lines, okay? Just like in the timeline viewer here, and you can jump between them. Now, if I was to grab the rectangle, let's go to the transform to node, okay? Which is the one that controls our logo. So we go down here and drop it down. Now you can see, if we scroll down here, we have our white lines. If you click them, you can actually move them independently. All right, and that's gonna be how you retime the animation. We're gonna leave it as is for now. All right, guys, so there you go. That's how you create a more advanced social media lower thirds for use in any of your videos. Hopefully you found this video helpful and you learned a little bit more. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And until the next video, see ya.